please <laughs> tell us who are you? Because I know who you are, but so many people don't recognize you without the uh, snowboard and the goggles. Yes, I'm a model. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm a snowboard. I was actually um, doing competition for 10 years around. Uh, in the 90s, early 2000, I was three times world champion. I was two times European champion, Japanese champion. I was North American champion and Finnish champion. I won those championships. And then I did those jump events like ah, X Games. I was also medalist. And uh, what else, you know, uh, in America, an uh, Aaron style jump event. I won also. And I, I won a few things, Olympic force. There you go. Well, that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, Olympics in Nagano, 98, correct? Oh, good. Yeah. Long <laughs> time ago, huh? <laughs> Long time ago. I was a kid back then, but I watched it. Okay. So yeah. for us, was that disappointing? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I expected the top three. Because around two weeks ago, I won a championship with the same run. And um, I, I'm sure that uh, I talked a lot against the IOC. Because I said back then that it's a mafia. And that uh, the snowboarder don't get enough money. They even wanted to take away when 20% uh, uh, of my sponsorship money back then. When, when I would uh, wear uh, the clothes at the Olympic. So I didn't pay that and uh, because I said, then I go to the media and uh, they wanted to do that with another competitor of Switzerland too. He was medalist at the end, uh, Alpine, Uli has notes. And uh, yeah, I had a few problems with this Olympic thing but, and I talked against that. I, I was here and a little bit sometimes I think that they gave me a little hit and put me on the fourth place. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So you agree that there is politics involved in sports, whether it's... Always when, when there's money around, as simple as that. Big money, corruption, like in FIFA. FIFA is based here in Bern, Switzerland. That's the, the football organization. I know uh, uh, the football is not that big in America, but here in Switzerland, uh, in Europe, it's really big football, not American football, no football. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, in American football, there's, just like you said, when there's big money involved, there is definitely undercurrents that we don't see. And a lot yeah. of the times athletes have to put up with that. And it's hard for one athlete to go against an entire organization, especially with the media today, when it can be manipulated and only one side of the story is being shown. It's hard to even preserve your image in the media because it feels that the more money you have, the more, not you, the more money they have, the more powerful they are, the more they are able to push the story that is more favorable to them and not necessarily the truth. The problem is that uh, the athletes uh, play, uh, they compete, they go, and then the, the whole story is over. They made also a fault with the Olympics, with the skateboarding. They went there, the Chinese, they train so hard and they're really good. But it, uh, you know what, what, what uh, they lose? The attitude of standing sideways of snowboarding. It's the lifestyle. Skateboarding is a lifestyle too. And uh, they forgot about that. It's not only gymnastic. And uh, with this uh, big problem, Terry Hawkinson back then, he had such a problem that uh, he didn't compete at the Olympics. That was a big step what he did. But uh, yeah, I went, I had contracts with Adidas. You know Adidas in uh, Canada? Yeah, you know. Of course. Of uh, course. Uh, um, yeah, okay, I was on the contract with them. And of course they said, uh, you have to go, finish. So I had to go, that's it. So you don't comply. That. 
um, you know, you can comply when you, you have um, the experience of something. That's why I went there. Now I know how it is. I cannot talk about something when I, I was not there and I didn't feel. And I felt it. And it's uh, not too much my thing. I had other competitions um, uh, where I had more fun. Yeah, but let's not talk too much about this. This, uh, this it's a past, you know, it's okay. <laughs> right. Well, I can sense that you are not happy with the way I guess it went. So we'll leave it behind. Um, were you sponsored or you, okay, this is how we're, we're kind of going to roll back, but into how you ended up in snowboarding and how it became your career. You mentioned that snowboarding is a lifestyle, but at some point you probably want to start making a living with it once you have so much experience and talent. Yeah, um, it's simple and uh, actually really simple. I noticed really early that uh, I, I don't fit in a system and I live, um, I listen to my heart and I follow my heart. So I was in a commercial, uh, commercial school, I think, yeah, you call that. Yeah, in a, in a, in a, in a school, uh, in a like university something, huh? Like a college? Uh, yeah, yes. And then, uh, then uh, I went to the director one morning and I said, I'm not coming anymore. He said, what, what, what are you doing? I'm getting snowboarder. Yeah, but do you have any results? Yeah, I'm on the world ranking list, 1,233. <laughs> I, I leave. I went to the classroom and I take everybody's hands and I look in, in their, their eyes and I said, I'm free now, guys. I will be snowboarding now. And it's a, a really, you know, when you make a decision, you have to stand behind your uh, 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 decision. Uh, it's all about commitment. When I go this way, I go this way, and I went this way. Three years later, I was number one in the world ranking list. And, uh, and that proved me that uh, um, listen to your heart and do something with passion, what you love, and not what the others expect from you. I talk about parents. I talk about friends. I talk about Instagram. I talk about media. Um, yeah, so I do whatever I want to do and I go my way. And I started that when I was 16. So I, I didn't have, I, I didn't, um, you know, I just quit school. Yeah. And this was a big risk. Of course. But uh, I made it, <laughs> kind of. Wait, yeah. okay. Well, don't, don't underestimate what you uh, just done because the courage of sticking with your decision and commitment is huge, especially when we have so many routes that we can take and we have so many opportunities nowadays that it's almost hard to make a choice because there's just not enough clarity in what you want. Just like you mentioned, don't listen to uh, friends, don't, don't listen to parents, do, even though we understand that they mean the best for us, it doesn't necessarily mean that they know what's best for us. The problem is that the people uh, learn all about how the system works, but the problem is that they don't know how about uh, uh, how they can, um, they don't know themselves. I, I had a hard time to find somebody who teaches me this. And, um, and uh, this was, uh, but this was actually after my career. Because before I had this space about listen to my heart, but I didn't know that uh, uh, to heal myself uh, and this, uh, this then I, I learned this after because snowboarding is a, this is a rock and roll. This is a girls, they love you because you're a wild guy. You have success, you have money, you travel around in five star hotels, you know, you have everything, but it's a, uh, this is not the truth. 
and um, and uh, it's hard to find a, a real cool girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't make it until today, <laughs> like a, a normal relationship like others have. Okay, I have a, a cool son, but um, that's the only thing I, <laughs> yeah, he laughs. <laughs> that's the only thing that uh, I didn't make. But um, uh, there, there's a way for me and that there's a reason uh, that, that it happens, but for the other people, it's, it's really important that they found their way, that they get into the quietness, that they start to to um, to get them known, you know, themselves. A lot of people, they don't know themselves. And the, the, the most important thing is stand once in front of the mirror naked and look at yourself and, and say, I love you. I really do. I love you. It doesn't look that good, this thing or something, <laughs> but I love you how you are. And when you don't have a weird feeling doing that, then you're pre pretty close to the goal. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. How did you find that person that showed you the way? Ah, uh, you know, after the success, um, you you see it when you uh, you know uh, Justin Bieber. It's not my type of guy and music, but when I see this guy, he has success, and he got uh, uh, when he was young, and he got really big problems in his life. And it's a little bit the same for others too. When you see uh, celebrities um, like Whitney Houston, like the daughter of Whitney Houston, they all have it's all the same problem. You know, you 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 try you try to find um, happiness in. I buy a new Porsche, then I buy a new things, then I want to have a new girlfriend, and then I want to have this, and then you're uh, a little bit uh, um, happy, but then uh, it goes away again. And this is uh, really, really dangerous. After snowboarding, I lost everything. That means um, I had the wrong people about, around me, and uh, I had no more money. Uh, in your words, broke. And uh, I had no job, nobody wanted me because I learned nothing, because I quit school. So I went to, um, I went to, uh, to work two years on the construction, just for helping. So uh, there I, I got a little bit uh, of money and the government, I had to go to the government to get help. We have the system in Switzerland and I was living out of $500 a month. Um, before I had like $20,000 a month and then 500 and I had uh, tax problems. Like I had to pay back $120,000. I was really broke. I started to drink <laughs> a lot every day. Wow. And at the end, I, I didn't go out anymore. And I stayed in my room for two years around <laughs> or in, in the apartment. I didn't go snowboard again. And, and then there I knew, you asked just before, um, yeah, about this guy who, who teached me this. Then I found, um, actually by accident, this guy and a friend told me, call this, this dude, he helps you. And he teached me how to meditate, how to go another way. And this meditation thing, I said, I'm not sitting in a corner half an hour here and not talking. And I don't, you know, I don't do that. But at the end, I did it. And uh, that's the new way um, of life or my new birth I had, actually. So my life changed then a lot. And uh, then I start to work a little bit and uh, I ended up in the real estate business talking. I can talk a lot and I can sell things. Then I started to sell houses and um, I paid back the tax. I uh, quit drinking since 15 years. I meditate every morning at six o'clock to seven o'clock. I make Tai Chi Qi Gong. I make um, breathing uh, exercises every day. Um, I don't smoke. I, <laughs> I'm a good boy now. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel I, to be a good boy? 
Yeah, I'm I'm feeling more alive, free and real. Yeah. How long mm -hmm. did it take you to go from being broke to paying off all your debt and yeah, feel but, that uh, you have a ground underneath your feet? Ten years. But you know, it's not the problem of the money. It was the problem of myself. If if I make it, because I I knew it, it was like a wave coming from from the back hitting me down, and I didn't know what's going on. That's the the biggest problem. And and then you have to start to 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 uh, to go deep in yourself. And a lot of things are coming up which you don't like, but everybody has that, and you you really have to um, um, yeah get along with it and work with yourself. Uh, it sounds easy, but it's the hardest thing I ever did. But um, when you want to to live the life I live, like with no boss, with my own system. I had to go this way, and now I have a really big company. I have around twenty apartments I rent out. I have three um, shops I rent out. Um, I I'm okay. I have my son, which I raise up myself. I have an au pair. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I can go and ride again. My sponsor is here again. Nitro snowboards. They support me. Um, I I do again television shows. Um, I'm back. I'm really back. But I'm I, I feel more comfortable now because I'm more real than before. <laughs> before it was really how you call that in me a fucked up rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. No words. worries. <laughs> Um, I find that your life path, which had such dramatic ups and downs, would you agree that it helps you raise your son differently than if you didn't go through all of that and didn't know what can come after you hitting you in your words like a wave? Yeah, I grown up, it's a lot of experience. And I, I'm really open, you know, he listens to, to me, he's here next to me, he knows about that. And this is important too. Uh, he knows how the reality can be. And I, I took him also, that was really important uh, to my last competition. I cannot stop doing competition. So I did the Ninja Warrior competition. You have this competition too in America? I, I saw it, I saw it on Ninja your- Ninja Warrior. Yeah, so I, I saw I, your I, run. I, I'm the oldest dude who won this competition with 46. Um, and um, and I, I, uh, I took him with me. And I, I told him before um, that the other things, uh, the other uh, competitors think that they kick my ass because I'm 46. But it's 60%, it's in your head, I told him. And I said, I'm going to turn it around. You'll see. Um, and I proved him that, uh, that uh, it works. That I'm not going there and say, yeah, I'm old. I'm going to lose. I said, be careful. I'm here now and I'm quite ready because I was prepared. I was bouldering. I, my muscles were ready. And the coordination and, and everything um, I have still from my competitions from snowboarding, no problem. And then I was on fire, how you call that again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I did it and I won it and he saw it. And, and I, I, this is for raising up a child really important that they see the father, you know, he did some faults, but you know, he has discipline, he's focused on something and yeah. My son is, uh, is a really good snowboarder too. He's sponsored by Volcom, Nitro Snowboards, and uh, TSG, that's a protection company. And uh, I told the sponsors, it's, it's gonna be hard for him 
if you want to compete and be better than me, <laughs> because oh yes, because I won almost <laughs> everything. And uh, <laughs> and and I told him that he can choose himself when he's a little bit older. When he wants to compete, he can compete, but he must not be in a team or something. He's just sponsored, and he goes more to to events like Red Bull. Um, they just make make now a, a, like a cool journey where they film each other and and they just have a good time. But high performance, right? We go to Eroet a lot, to to Lapland uh, in two weeks. Uh, in two weeks and um, so here and two weeks uh, and we shoot over there and we make make things like this. Oh my and, gosh, uh, what a like life! Having ha having a good time, you know. Yeah, I you know my I I worked quite hard to raise up my business, but now I went went down to thirty percent of work because I need to look after myself. I need time that uh, that I have that I can meditate in the morning, that I can raise up my child, that I, you know, I need time. So I, I work 30% only, yes. Well, at 46, yeah. I, I think it's a great goal for someone to, you're a fairly, I guess, retired uh, business owner in a sense that you work when you want to, when it fits your schedule, but you put yourself first. But you did have to work for it. It doesn't just happen. Yeah. You have to work. You have to do something. You have to do something. It's always like this. When you want to move a stone, you have to lift it up first. Sometimes it's heavy. But you have to go through. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. But that's my personality. And I, I'm fighting for my, uh, my freedom and for my, or I was, um, because the system wants to suck you in. And that I am not the system, not well, at all. Let's talk about the system. You know, we have yeah. sports and I always compare sports to military. You know, uh, the way athletes are being treated, they are following orders. They are sacrificing their bodies and their lives to the sport to belong but then there's a difference between military when they retire they retire with a pension and a good ground with athletes they are broken used and abused and then they are thrown out and no longer needed 90 95 percent and i know a lot of stories where they they stay broke they don't know what to do after their career. Mostly they, they uh, open up a bar or a restaurant or they sell insurance contracts or, um, yeah, I don't know, not too much. Being trainee, going uh, the, to the FIS, working at the, at, the, at the association or something. But Does it make else, them happy though? I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, they're they are, they lived in a in a in a in a world which is time limited. And by the time you have this, you don't know that it's time limited, and you have a shock when you get exchanged too quick until you realize what happened, like this, back. Because you have thousands of other guys hunting you and they want your position. And when you don't, when you're too um, relaxed in your position because you're successful, they can hit you badly. And when you're 20, 25, you don't think about, yeah, but I should buy a, re uh, you know, a, a, you know some, a house or apartment and rent it out. It's hard, you know. We we, we need uh, we we should help them, the youngers, you know, to the trainer or the organization. They really should help them. Say, hey, look, take this prize money, put it on the bank account, uh, or you know, just help them. 
give them some advices what they could do later with it you're yeah. right we don't have a structure i don't know any country in the world that does that maybe an occasional coach who is really involved in the athlete's life would guide them like that but it's a rarity and i'd say it's an exclusion out of the common rule of how the system works and it's interesting you say that because i find that freestyle snowboarders they're more independent but they have to hustle more for the sponsors for the money that they need to be able to travel to competitions where other sports are more funded and i guess athletes are more reliable on the system on the government or on the sponsor that takes care of the expenses and everything that's expected of them is train hard eat well rest well and repeat and obviously when they come out of the sport it's very hard to go from here's everything you need for doing what you're doing to coming out into the world where you not only have to figure out what you need to be doing you also need to support yourself financially and a lot of athletes are lost because they don't even recognize the skills that they possess if any that's, that's uh, most of the time like this but we have a sport where you can especially in america or canada you can make a big name with instagram it's not the only a negative thing with instagram or or um, TikTok or so, you can make a big name when you film, when you make it clever. And uh, you get more money than a lot of athletes. That was back then like this. The Europeans had always to compete because they measure you um, um, how good you are when you, uh, when you compete. You cannot prove your you, uh, your your level uh, or you show your level uh, when you film in Europe. So I had to do, I had no way, uh, no, no other way. I had to compete that I get professional snowboarders. So I went into this competition thing. I won all, all this stuff. Then I came to America and I saw it. I came to Whistler, Black Comp. I saw Mount Hood. I saw those superstar, which I saw in the snowboard magazines. And they didn't compete. And I want, always wanted to be like this, but I was too much in this competition team, so I, I couldn't leave it. And, uh, and it's still there. And it's a chain, a you know, in the snowboard team, at the, uh, the, at, I see, uh, you know, they changed the marketing a little bit by Burton snowboards and stuff. They want to get back to the, to the real snowboarding also. And um, th that's why I would love that my son is going more this direction of being a snowboarder, being creative, make a cool film, travel, learn about the world. This is more important than you said before. Eat, train, sleep, that. No, 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 wrong way. <laughs> but a lot, uh, most of the people do that, I know. But that's the slave of the system. It's an interesting Sorry. word for that. Um, it's a harsh word, I agree. Uh, it's probably a very precise word for describing what a lot of athletes are going through. I like the way you put snowboarding as art making and expressing yourself versus proving and fighting because there's a lot of aggression involved in the competition because you have to beat other people and i don't think you can really stay calm and detached from all other people the way they do the way they race the uh, what they do and you slowly start focusing more on what they are doing to be able to beat them instead of what you are doing and how you can do what you do better more creative and creativity is not graded, I think, by points. You can't say that Picasso is better than Van Gogh, right? You, can't, you, you never compare art. And I think competition is a comparison versus the art of sport, 
is different is how you express yourself through your body, through your performance, through your flexibility. I don't know what, what kind of sport that is, but it's a self-expression. When you go into the system of the sport, then everything becomes average because there is a mold to fit and everything outside that needs to be cut off, you know, pushed in and kind of just fit the vision of, of that system versus you being able to really shine and show who you really are. You know, I don't say it's wrong uh, that, um, or bad. You know, there are so many personalities, uh, but when you see a thousand sheep together, those sheep, they think they're, they're all safe and they all go to the same direction. And uh, this is a dangerous way because it can still hit you badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most of the people do that. And I'm this sheep which is alone and go the other way. And uh, nobody told me that the other way is a bad way. And uh, I really just try to go this way. And uh, I feel better this way. <laughs> For me, myself, you know, I don't say that this is the only way. Each person has to make their own uh, experience. It's just my way, what I did, and uh, it was not the easy way, but it was my way. And um, and it's it's a hard thing when you have a child. What is good or what is bad? <laughs> it's um, it's uh, just keeping the balance and. Um, uh, the most important thing is when you want to raise up your child successfully is, uh, I think, two things. Um, give him love and give him your time. Spend time with him, not with your hand. Do it, put it away. Spend time focused on him. Listen to what he says, because his world is interesting. I told him, Jeremy, I have a big problem. You know, the system said uh, back then, yeah, you're grown up now and uh, you don't play anymore. I, I forgot how to play with, your, with those toys. Can you show me? And he said, he looked at me, I said, hey, yeah, of course it can show you. Look, you take the Playmobil and you put it there. Then you make a story, like in a film, you know. And then we play, you know. And just play. Don't think too much, Dad. And <laughs> I was like, okay, good. I tried this. And now I play again. So we don't watch television. We don't have PlayStation. And we make our own film with the Playmobil. And, and it's not all about that we learn them, they learn us too, a lot of things. And that's what I mean about, you know, give them the time because you, you, you really can see so much and learn so much in their world what we forgot because we are chasing after things which we think we have to. You understand? In my oh, oh, I get weird it. English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get that. English. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, you bring already your attitude into snowboarding, your personality. And then um, snowboard, snowboarding creates you a little bit. But the base you bring already into snowboarding, your personality, you, you are who you are. When you're not powerful in your mind, uh, you will lose when you have to give performance under pressure. I got better when it was the world championship because I like that. Under pressure, I'm more focused. But um, I, I, I don't think so. It's just, you know, doesn't matter what you do in life. 
it's the experience you have. If you play tennis, golf, whatever, it's just uh, lo losing and winning is so close together. Winning is, is really, really easy. Losing is so hard. And, uh, and those are really, really cool experience you, you can get in sport and, and a lot of times <laughs> that uh, it helps you for the off, after uh, life, I say, the real life, when you, you start uh, to have your own apartment. I didn't have that. I was living 10 years in the hotel and you have to start from zero, but, but um, it's interesting and it helps you, yeah. Amazing. Well, Fabienne, <laughs> thank you so much. It has been a very thoughtful and spiritual conversation, which you don't necessarily compare spirituality with snowboarding on a daily basis, but somehow today we were able to put those two together and have a very thought provoking conversation. So thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> no problem.